Oh. Oh boy, howdy. Hello. Hello and welcome to night eight of the 12 beers of Christmas craft beer experience presented by Bruvana. I'm your host, Brian, and I've got a new co-host to help us kick off 2023. And I'm so ho- happy that that co-host is my good friend, Isaac Bell. How's it going, Isaac? Great to be here, Brian. I I love the outfit, love the enthusiasm, matching hats. This this is wonderful. I'm not going to be lying. Lying. I've worn this outfit for since Christmas Eve. I don't I don't know if uh, you caught any of the other streams earlier, but I mentioned that um, I have not washed this suit since we shot the uh, Christmas in July promo back there in you go. June. So I think Mitch Hedberg said it best. Uh, this shirt is dry clean only, which means it's dirty. <laughs> Uh, my life story yeah no we we got this as a a bit one of my good friends his birthday song he's a christmas eve baby so we've got to listen to him complain about how he gets the dual you know christmas birthday presents and uh so we did a a bar crawl in our uh in our outfits and it was uh it was tremendous highly recommend that's great that's great well isaac since it's the first time you uh you are joining us on the 12 beers of christmas this year you want to give the folks at home a little bit of background information about your uh your relationship with beer oh yeah sure um beer and i are married uh if it's a relationship status uh, kind of thing um i love to drink it i've always known that um i also am an avid home brewer um i am trying to be less of a bottle collector um that was my new year's resolution last year and i did fairly well uh with that um I love all styles of beer. Uh, There's kinds that I don't prefer, but um, I like to brew the things that can last a little bit longer at home. Uh, I have an eight tap kegerator downstairs, which is usually at least halfway full most of the time. Um, Yeah. And you also work, you know, you you just keep talking about how much you like drinking beer. I like to drink beer. Yeah, that's it. You're credentialed Uh, as well is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, yeah, experience. So, yeah, my my full time is with with city brew tours, uh, with with uh, going around and uh, and being in lots of breweries at lots of different stages and places, and and uh, talking beer and uh, working towards uh, some some accreditation other than being an online cicerone. As Richard in the chat put it, Isaac is experienced. Experienced, yeah, experienced. absolutely. Uh, well put. Well put, Richard. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Thanks for joining us for another night of the stream. Uh, Joey says looking at doing one of those city brew tours. Pittsburgh, perhaps. I'd highly recommend it. I hear hear Pittsburgh's a pretty cool city. We won't go any further than that. Uh, Can confirm. Happy New Year. Thank you, Isaac. Happy New Year, everyone. 2023 is here officially. And we're here tonight to talk about tonight's beer. And we have the first call from Modest Brewing. You also got this awesome sticker in there. And tonight is Design Your Own Can Label Art. So uh, Isaac, myself, and our guest, when we get to his introduction, we're going to be trying to work on these throughout the night. And we'll show you what we come up with as we make our way through our discussion. But also, if you design your own can label, uh, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook, Tag us in it at Bruvana, hashtag 12 beers of Christmas. We would love to see what you all come up with. I'm sure there are so many more talented artistic people out there uh, than me. Remember, if you want to pose a question for our guest, then uh, use the Q&A section of Zoom and make sure you have your chat set to everyone. Um, Tonight, uh, we're going to be joined by an awesome guest. So please join me in welcoming the head of sales and co-founder of Modest Brewing Company, John Donnelly. How's it going, John? Doing great. Thanks for having me, you guys. Happy New Year. Thanks for the Happy. memo on the uh, Santa attire. <laughs> yeah, <don't> <laughs> absolutely. I've changed since the last time you saw me. Yeah, it was like 10 minutes ago. Now we're I just went to go get another beer and take a leak and all of a sudden there's a couple of Santas here. Right. Surprise. They're, <laughs> they're going to know I'm lying. I said, I haven't taken it off since Christmas Eve. 
<laughs> it's stuck. It's stuck on at this point. It's woven its way into your chest area. Right. In between the barley wine sweat and the uh, <laughs> so good. You can you can use that name. Right, right, but... You can use that name. <laughs> barley barley wine sweat. That's right. You, you might you might see one of those in the next couple of months. <laughs> Love oh it. boy. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's get into this beer here, John. Uh, what would you like to tell? Tell us about the uh, first call. Sorry, Isaac, I just totally stepped on your sure. question there. Yeah, that's you. all good. Well, <laughs> you're, you're thirsty. <laughs> D- tell us about the beer, John. Sure, sure. Uh, so, so first call. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mm. Gross. Nice. Um, so this is our uh, this is our coffee lager. Uh, it's not a blonde ale. I've seen that uh, seen that a lot. Um, not just in the chat today, but uh, it's a coffee lager. So it's kind of an American pale lager, uh, kind of zhushed up with oats, uh, some lactose, sugar, and then a whole bunch of coffee. Um, so we, um, this is a, this is the, the one of the first beers that we opened with and has, uh, well, let's see, it'll be seven in April. Um, so this is one of the only ones that uh, has stayed the entire length of our tenure at, uh, at Modest. So, um, uh, pretty excited about this beer. We, we really like it. Um, and it's fitting that we're drinking this on new year's day when everyone, uh, could be hung over. Um, yeah, because it's probably the best hangover cure that I've ever found. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my, well, probably my favorite beer that we make. I would have liked another one for this morning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> if, yeah, if you, uh, <laughs> if you saved it till tonight, I apologize. <laughs> I think, uh, uh we have a question in in the Q and A already, sure. and this is a, a a question that I think always comes up with coffee and beers. Yeah. Is there caffeine in this beer? Two people have asked it now. Right. Yes, I get that a lot. Um. So so this is a um just like the the label says, cold press coffee lager. So our process on this is we make we brew the lager, um, and then right before we package, about twenty four hours before we package it. We hit it with, um, depending on the batch size, um, just a uh, basically we're making cold brew with beer. Um, so uh, I think what the, the amount of caffeine in it is, a, is about a half a cup of coffee. Um, it's uh, it's not enough to you know really get you get you going, but the six and a half percent alcohol will probably catch up with you before the caffeine will. <laughs> I've certainly tr- I've certainly tried. <laughs> Uh, oh, several times, but uh, it cer- turns out I I tend to get drunk before I get caffeinated. So, <laughs> so yes and no. <laughs> Speaking of great mornings, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm also very curious about in, in my older age I've be, become more sensitive to to caffeine, and sure. uh, yeah, so of course I've, I've had that question before as well. And I think uh, I've heard a lot of brewers tell me that. It's no more than like having a, a Coke in terms of like yeah. caffeine, like a soda. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. I um you know, I can't remember the exact, you know, I think the one that the one that we're drinking right now uh was a 40 barrel batch. And I think we do maybe 15 to 20 pounds of coffee. So it is a lot of coffee when you think of it in a in the bagged form. Um wow. but uh as far as uh like how much, you know, actual uh, coffee to liquid ratio is, is pretty, um, uh, it's pretty liberal, uh, in that way, I guess. Um, it's also named after a, uh, uh, no effect song. That's all about day drinking. So that's that's pretty right. fitting. <laughs> great. Yeah. Great. I, another great question, uh, from the chat ever consider brewing it with decaf for po- folks that can't do regular. I don't think I've ever had a, a beer brewed with decaf coffee. Have you? Oh. Has Modest considered it? Um, we haven't. But that's <laughs> a de- that's a good idea. I've never actually thought of that before. Yeah, I'm cause... still uh, heavy in my caffeine addictions as a small business owner and a new uh, new dad. So <laughs> yeah. decaf Jesus is not patent it. pending. Yeah, de- decaf is not in my uh, in my cabinet uh, <laughs> at this point in my life. I don't know if I've had a decaf coffee. There uh, a couple Christmases ago, I was at my wife's uh, grandmother's place, and we were drinking coffee like really heavily. And I was still, I felt like I was getting more tired and more heartburn. 
And then <laughs> I looked at the Folgers can that was on the counter and it was the green lid, which is like the dead giveaway decaf. And I was like, what Barbers. am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing right now? The empty. This these is... are completely empty calories. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just getting heartburn and, and bubble guts. And now I'm just <laughs> not, not caffeine. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, this yeah is you great. can't I... put this uh, <laughs> inside the chat. You can you can definitely put this in your coffee tomorrow when it's totally normal. Yep. Yeah, Gerald, you're great. From all of us. You're doing great. <laughs> I think this is one of these beer Brian, I think you and I both recently have had uh another beer with lactose in it where um you know it was hardly or hardly noticeably present. And I this yeah. this feels like one of those sure. Unless you told me, I don't know if I would go looking for it. So I appreciate that. Right on. Yeah, um, the kind of the, the best. I, th- I feel like the the what really gets me into this this beer a lot is just like I'm drink obviously drinking out of a can, but but pouring this into a glass and it looks like this drowned lands Vienna Lager, pretty solid. Like it's kind of a mind bender, and being that it's a light lager. It, um, you know, has this, you know, crack the can and it's like you open a bag of coffee um, because there's just not a lot of um, beer. That sounds weird, but there's not a lot of beer to like compete with the aroma and flavor. Right. right? So if you got like an imperial stout with coffee, it's like roasted barley already smells and tastes like coffee. So Mm -hmm. you're kind of like you got to get get a pretty intense coffee to counteract that roasted barley or black patent malt or whatever you're using. but uh, yeah, no, this is a it's a good hangover beer, that's for sure. <laughs> Brian, are you are you drawing? Yeah, I'm drawing my label, like I mentioned that we're that we were doing. I'm, are I'm we just listening so- attentively and drawing shittily. <laughs> that's why I sent mine to my three year old because it would look similar. <laughs> yeah, maybe better. More, le- so, more than less, yeah, better. Um, we're talking about you know labels tonight and this 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 beer has an awesome label um i got the chance to come out to modest back in uh oh geez april of uh 2022 and had a great time there we talked a lot about art and what that means to modest as a brand and this year well this past year (laughs) modest used eight different artists to create different labels uh, throughout the year through the brewery. So could you talk a, a little bit more about that process of working with different artists, how you choose yeah. them and, and why that's so important to modest? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. We, we've always kind of had this, um, you know, uh, so modest uh, kind of take a step back. Our, our, our general overview or whatever of modest is uh, someone that modifies. So modifying beer is what we like to do. Before, you know, in our past lives, myself and our, uh, my business partners were car mechanics, bike mechanics, uh, motorcycle guys, snowmobile guys. So we were, we were always um, tinkering with stuff. Um, you, you know, you buy something new and then you want to tinker it with it and turn it into your own thing. And that was kind of our, uh, kind of what we want to do with beer. So that's what we've been doing since we were home brewing. We built uh, a pretty crazy homebrew system and then we translated that into professional brewing and we bought a ridiculous professional brewing system right <laughs> right brian uh and um so <laughs> yeah <laughs> we went we went a little over um but uh um but that was kind of the the, the whole idea um was to uh, uh really to just uh promote modifiers and people that want to you know make art make uh make things make stuff their own uh share with the world um, so we had partnered with a lot of different artists over the last seven years. Um, this one is made by a guy named Mike Davis. Um, he's with a group uh, called uh, Burlesque of North America. Um, the the artist team there is about 10 people. Um, they, I think pretty much everyone has done a label with, with us um, or a mural or something like that. Um, so we've we've really tried to open up um open up our cans to um just to just to artists so basically the only thing that stays the same is that that and the government label and um we we come up with a name we send it off to 
kind of a roster of, of artists that we have uh, kind of in our, in our wheelhouse. Um, and um, excuse me. Um, we, uh, we, yeah, we just kind of crank out limited releases with, with those people in mind. Uh, you know, a lot of tattoo artists, a lot of uh, cool street arts people, um, just a lot of different styles of art. And really there isn't a, a like common thread besides just the modest brewing name uh, and logo. So Really, we just try to open it up for uh, for any kind of art that uh, that somebody wants to put on a on a beer label. If we could do three D art, we could probably we would try to do that, but yeah, that would be that would be a whole other logistical nightmare. I don't want to deal with. Two thousand and twenty three goals. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yep. We we did a we did one beer a couple of years ago that was a D and D. It was a collaboration with a local artist that was really into D and D um dungeons and dragons for you at home and uh <laughs> we we did Actually, four different yeah. labels in a four pack so we had to have two people sitting there making sure that everyone like the game board was part of the uh it's all awesome. part of the the the, the four pack. So you pull the labels off turn it into a game board do uh, all the stuff like you get power-ups and everything like that it was a huge undertaking um and i think if i tried to do that again my packaging people would crucify me <laughs> <laughs> or at least, you know, try. <laughs> it's pretty, it was pretty intense. It was really, it turned out really cool and we still get uh, requests from it, but yeah, it's been a, it's, it, it was a wild, wild time. Love Thank that. you, Dan. Awesome. That's Shout awesome. out Dan. Absolutely. Speaking of, of 2023, uh, 2023 goals uh and you've already alluded to this we, we've all kind of joked around about it already but new year's day might as well be national hangover day um 100%. yep absolutely uh for me my preferred uh hangover cure is actually a uh a preemptive strike so i try to drink as much water as i possibly can before i go out um and also a shout out to liquid iv i don't know if you've ever had one of those i've not but- but it's I've heard of them. Not actually like an IV, because I know that they have those two for rock stars. I'm not that important. Um, <laughs> hey, us, us plebeians can you can or any anybody can order a, a, a an IV. Well, I mean, if you have money for it, but right, too yeah. shy. Yeah, well, th- therein is the problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but speaking of which, uh, and you know, first call obviously it seems like a great hangover cure. Um, do you have a go to hangover cure? Well, since I have a three-year-old, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Pedialyte fucking rules. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Actually, we... no, just hair, just hair of the dog. I mean, seriously, yeah. first call is first call is legit. One of the best hangover cures I've ever had. Wow. You got uh, your you got your coffee. It fits in perfectly with like the the, the brunch spread of like water, orange juice, bloody mary, coffee, beer. And you just get like one less glass in front of you. Yeah, that's yeah. in front of that eggs, Benny. You know, <laughs> it's like you know me, John. Yes, yeah, kindred spirits. That's right. <laughs> yeah, every time I go to brunch, I play a game called Too Many Glasses because yeah, yeah I, exactly. There's, there's too many things to drink in front of me. I mean, I'm not going to turn any one of them down. But <laughs> right, exactly. There are too they're many all, of them. They're all great in their own ways. Right. Water is probably going to be the one that I drink the less of because it's water, but whatever. Uh, Roger in the chat says brunch without alcohol is just a sad late breakfast. Um, it's true. <laughs> Roger Wood, you're a I'm, smart man. I'm so I'm so glad you said Pedialyte. Um, <laughs> when when, That's when extreme Isaac, cases, extreme. When cases Isaac and only. I would go to uh, a company big company meetings together, it was the official hangover recovery, so we could go 100%. and sit. In like an eight hour long training meeting. Um, and then our friends from Philly Philly invented the Philadelphia cocktail, which was uh Pedialyte and Rockstar Energy Drink mixed together. And that was like when Shut you're up. on dire straits, you you go for <laughs> you go for that. It's not it's not very pleasant to drink, but you know, it gets the job. Dude, a, little of, a little bit of an eight ball there. <laughs> Shout that's out like, to uh, yeah, it's like John a, and that's Gil. like a hungover speedball yeah. or some shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dave Mustaine would be so proud of you. <laughs> that's right. We Dang. used to keep. I used to. We used to do uh, Pedialyte pops in college, and I used to make everyone have them before we went to bed. 
Everyone always used to make fun of me until the morning. Hold on, back up. Pedialyte pops like a like a like popsicles, like a popsicle. Okay, yeah. Over the summer, yes. like mid July, it's an awesome like uh, treat before you go to bed. Dude, I want to go to Philly or next. So bad. This is awesome. I'd, like I'm learning all these things. I gotta start taking notes. We should, if if, <laughs> if anything, just for a, a cheesesteak. I have oh, yeah. a. Absolutely. I have I gotta, uh, yeah. Pedialyte freezer pops in my freezer right now. Do you? Actually, yes. Did you make them yourself or did you buy them that way? No, they sell them that way. Yeah. They sell them that way. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like yeah. At Walgreens or something? They yeah. sell like. Yeah. No well, my mom, my mom actually brought them over because because my wife's been going through some sickness this week. Um, so, sure. mom, throw it into the chat. Where where did you get this? <laughs> <laughs> mom. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> CVS. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would guess. Yeah, CVS, Walgreens, that's Target. That's amazing. Oh, you know, that's so good. Giant, giant Eagle, as as we go to here in Pittsburgh. Big Bird. Yeah. Big Bird. Giant, giant Eagle. What? I never. You did this. get it from Giant. I gotta come. Giant I gotta Eagle. come out. To, I gotta come out to PA, man. This is learning all sorts of stuff. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'll yep. bring a case of first call with me. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you Perfect. gotta, yep. I was gonna say, you gotta, you got a place to stay, you got a couch to sleep on here. I can't get out oh, of bed. Um, love it. Don't care. Floor is fine with me, too. So, um, <laughs> Bonus put out a recap of 2022 highlights, uh, including sure. producing over 217,000 gallons of, of beer and other uh, alcoholic drinks uh, that you Li- make. You liquids, yeah. liquids, yes. <laughs> uh you sent beer to two countries outside of the united states as well as six states within the united states yes. and you said you were you know basically a dispensary um a two-part <laughs> question <laughs> yes two-part question which of the 22 20, 2022 highlights are you most proud of and okay. uh please explain the dispensary thing all right sweet um <laughs> Uh, the dispensary thing is probably uh, probably easier to talk about. I think uh, this is kind of the uh, the highlight of uh, of the year for Minnesota. Anyway, um, thing I'm most proud of thing of the, the thing that I'm most proud of in the in the the year is probably just hosting CBC in Minneapolis this year. Uh, I had a great time. Uh, met a lot of people. Actually, a lot of people in the um, uh, the boxes at me. Thank you for that as well. Um, resident culture. Uh, Tons of people actually were came, came through, uh, became big big fans of uh, a lot of the breweries uh, that came through. Um, but the um, and the dispensary thing. So uh, how do I put that nicely? So we uh, um, accidentally uh, legalized marijuana in um, in Minnesota somehow. Um, a lot of people didn't read the bill. Amazing. Um, yeah, which is awesome. Like it, it no, no felonies, but, uh, but um, so there is a, uh, the farm bill, uh, 2018, there's a farm bill. Uh, so all this um, hemp that we grow in Minnesota, um, we were making a lot of CBD and things like that with it. Um, but now, now through uh, the miracle of science, we can uh, extract Delta nine THC, uh, through, um, I don't know, some crazy Willy Wonka stuff, um, (laughs) but it's, um, yeah, science and stuff. So we started making, um, uh, July 1st, uh, edible gummies and THC beverages were legalized, uh, with, um, hmm, how do I say this? Minimal oversight. Uh, there was no like specialized taxing. There was no, um, yeah, uh, there was no real like board to get approval through. Uh, there was no, no real, regulatory like, agency specifically yeah, you know, focused regulations on regulations and so Minnesota is the wild, wild west, is what you're saying. A hundred percent. It is amazing. Um, yeah. So this was actually so. Uh, so I live in a, a western uh, the, the city next to Minneapolis is called St. Louis Park. Uh, the the um, Senator or the uh, representative for our uh, our part of the of uh, the city was uh, kind of one of the the f- uh, forefront pushers for this, and 
uh, he was basically like, well, um, no one read the bill and everyone voted yes for it. So let's go. So now we can make, I, just, I brought a couple cans out of my own personal fridge, but so this is uh, a product we call Tint. It's an acronym that says, thanks, I needed that. <laughs> and uh, it's three milligram THC seltzer with blackberry and lime. Um, more or less, it's uh, a hard seltzer minus the alcohol uh, plus fruit. Uh, and then Melt is a new one that we came out with, makes everything less terrible. And it's uh, ginger, lime, and lemon. Uh, and then we have a blood orange raspberry and then like three or four other flavors of, of all of them. So we, we have definitely, uh, um, we've definitely taken advantage of the, uh, the loopholes that are there, not even loopholes. They're just, that's the way the law is written. So, um, we, but it's basically turned into, uh, uh, one of our best selling products available. So. Which and it's it's turned into like really cool, um, uh, really cool like taproom experience because uh, we're the only state that allows THC consumption on site, which is kind of crazy. Um, you know, yeah, you nice. can come in and have a beer, have a THC beverage. You can you know do you know it, it's it's pretty cool actually. I, I I've seen um, you know working a couple taproom shifts. Um, there is. Uh, there's uh, the demographics are wild. You know, I'm a long haired 35 hippie, 35 year old hippie. So I know that the people that look like me coming in are going to be drinking tents and stuff. Uh, but uh, the hot, like the, you know, the upper, uh, upper tiers of, of uh, our demographics and uh, our customer base are coming in drinking four, three, four of them at a time. And they're like, okay, cool. You know, like, it's kind of it's kind of cool just to watch um, uh, people just come through and enjoy these beverages like at the same time with their friends that drink, people that don't drink, people that uh, that only you you know do RTHC users or whatever. It's it's kind of sweet, you know. Um, it's it's turned the the tap room into a, a much like I don't know. It's weird. It's it's cool, but it's weird. And um, but we don't have like. Um, uh, I don't even know how to um, uh, say it, but um, we just, we, we really haven't had a lot of um, oversight, but it's a lot of the community of the breweries that are making them are talking to each other saying like, Hey, this is how big we're going to go. Like, yeah, we can go there, but that's dumb. Let's keep it here. So we have a three milligram and we only go up to 10. So um, anybody that's used a gummy before uh, taking a gummy in Colorado or wherever, 10 milligrams is pretty take the edge off pretty good you know yeah. um but yeah. you know it's all it's all tolerance based so like like our three milligram is like your pilsner and our melt it's a 10 milligram and that's like a imperial stout so it's kind of like up to the user or you know the the user experience so it's cool just just trailblazing out there when yeah. did, Bla when did those release did, did, did you have those when i was there in april no so the, the okay. lock came right. in uh the lock came into in, into effect uh july 1st okay you we did launched, yeah, you did say july 1st yeah yeah uh and we launched our first one uh august like 15th so we were like kind of on the kind of on the, the front edge of it um and it and everyone's kind of tiptoeing around how to do it and things like that so it's just kind of a group chat of um brewery people just kind of like hey how would you do this mm -hmm. I'm just this picturing do it. I'm just picturing your front of house staff, you know, like having a meeting, being like debauchery is down and food sales are up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Everybody's like, I don't know, man, this is gonna be weird. People are gonna be high in the tap room. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Did you think is... people weren't high in the tap room before. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody was doing it before. Karen yeah. in the chat says, Do you offer snacks? Yeah, I hope, yeah. For making for a killing on everyone. pretzels and popcorn, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, Chad is going nuts. Uh, sh sh is it time for Pot Vana? Uh, Pot City Vana. Brew Tours Twin Cities yes. with THC, and then someone says THC Twin High Cities. Yeah, do do yep. with, do what you will with those names. So, 
we we didn't really talk about the uh, we spent more time on the the dispensary side uh, which is very cool glad we did yeah uh side of things yeah. uh but prior to that we were also talking about the 2022 highlights um and all the yeah. beer you made everywhere all the things that you've done um right you also put out a list of resolutions and that was including okay. releasing a 50 proof beer um <laughs> So a couple yes. questions to follow up with there. So the first question is, is why? Um, <laughs> right. The second question is how? And then sure. why again? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, I'll go for the, I'll go straight through the middle first. Uh, how? Um, so at Modest, we have, uh, like I alluded to before, we have a very crazy um Mash filter system. So it's a it's a crazy Frankenstein system um, that we have put together. Well, we didn't personally, but found through um, uh, through vendors and and craft brewers conference and professional brewing and things like that. Uh, we have a, a mash filter system. It looks like a long accordion. It's forty six different plates, um, and uh, it's a four vessel system. So mash uh, mash filter boil kettle whirlpool um it works similar to if you th think uh this is my this is my normal tour brian's shaking his head. <laughs> oh no <laughs> i was i was shaking he's heard this yeah, exact yeah. same like i've said this 150 times uh but uh it, it, if you think of um you know traditional brewing with a lot of ton uh you know it's like a, as a traditional uh, i'm sorry it's a um it's like a coffee uh type system so you're putting ground product on top water in it draining it through. Uh, ours works like a fresh, uh, sorry, like a French press. So uh, it's all, you know, comes out of the, um, comes out of the mash, uh, mash mixer, drains into the mash filter. Uh, the mash filter is a series of plate and frame, um, air bladder, mesh uh, uh, filter membrane. So the product goes, uh, fills the chamber, squishes it out, what that does uh, is it's very highly efficient in uh, raw material uh, use. So like Heineken, Coors, um, Budweiser, all, all the big guys use them for the efficiency part. Uh, we use it for dumb shit like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like 50 proof beer or um, even like this beer. This is 25% oats. So any homebrewers in the chat using 25% oats are probably wringing their knuckles thinking about how many rice hulls they got to buy to just, just to make sure that that waters through without a stuck mash. So the mash filter uses uh, force and pressure. Uh, it's an air bladder. It's a filter membrane and it just squishes the thing through. Um, there is, uh, let's see, it's a 20, it's, so it's a 25 hectoliter system, 20 ish barrels. Um, and um, what we can use it for, uh, is basically it's taking all of that, um, uh, beta glucans and all the, the very, uh, sticky stuff, uh, and pushing it through without any problem because it, it's using compressed air rather than gravity. So with this 50 proof beer, we took a mash, uh, recipe from bourbon. Uh, so 51% corn. Uh, I think it's, uh, I gotta look at my notes again, but 51% corn, um, and the rest is, uh, wheat and barley. And, uh, so yeah, more or less, uh, this thing can push anything that's starchy, uh, we can make a beer out of it. Um, so through that process, we made a 26% alcohol beer uh All lots right. of uh, lots of sugar lots of corn lots of barley and wheat um and we are barrel aging it in uh knob creek barrels uh for we we made this before you came brian so this was like march of last maybe march or april uh, march or february of last year uh and we're probably going to be releasing it in april of this come well oh, it's 2023 April of this year for our anniversary. This year, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we did this once before. Um, and uh, Dan, to your question, lots, or sorry, Roger, uh, what kind of yeast can survive that? It's uh, it's high gravity brewing yeast. 
Um, so it's, uh, we use high gravity, we pitch it with high gravity brewing yeast and we feed it sugar. Um, so it's, uh, a lot of, uh, um, cane sugar, demerara sugar and dextrose. Um, so it's, it, it is a ton of process. Uh, we have six, six or eight, um, barrels, uh, uh Knob Creek barrels that are filled right now. And it's just aging because the, th- the, it tastes like rocket fuel. Right. It is uh, it's got it it is rocket fuel. It's gotta take it's gotta take uh, uh at least a year. Um and uh during the fermentation process we do we do dose it with O2. Um and it's uh yeah, it's it's a it's, a, it's an experience. It's it's an experience. We've done it once before, um do uh kind of playing off of a knob creek bourbon recipe. Um and it turned out to be 19%. And we served in the tap room like an old fashioned. So we did only four ounce pours, uh, and did a, um, like a, a peel of orange spritz that did the whole thing. Uh, and it was awesome. It was really, really good. We only got like six half barrels out of the, the first experiment, but it was amazing. Really, really good, really good, good beer. Um, but it's not really a beer. It's weird. It's kind of like a new, it's like a barley wine corn but like i don't want to call it corn wine because that's gross but like <laughs> you know it's it's just like this kind of like weird Why? thing of like so we're calling it brewed spirit so it's it's fermented like like beer it's brewed like beer but it's not distilled because in minnesota we're not allowed to distill um have a distillery and a brewery in the same space oh joey with a very good question in the chat do you plan to carb it yes fully carb um, it Ooh. Not fully carb, not fully carb. So it's, it, it is carbonated to the point where it can, um, it, it, it will hold a little bit. I'm not sure of the volumes <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, it's been a long time since we made that first one, but, um, it is a, yeah, it is a different, uh, a different style of, of, you can't, I can't even really call it beer because it's, it is really like a whiskey. It's like you're drinking the, the, um the wash of whiskey but it's fermented and uh barrel so it's kind of it's weird like amalgam of whiskey beer thing i don't know so we're pretty stoked stoked about it um i just say john that's the first time anybody's ever told me that they're going to cut it right down the middle and actually cut it right down the middle i think you did a really good job with that sure (laughs) thanks man (laughs) how and the why you you nailed them both Yeah. yeah yeah It's um, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. It's it, it is it is an, uh, an amalgam of uh, of a couple different styles and and spirit category and beer category and and, and something like that. Um, Doug, you you mentioned uh, uh, Brew Dog uh, making the forty two percent alcohol beer. I have one of those bottles. It's fucking gross. It's super gross. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, it's an ice uh, it's an ice box. Um, and we're, and that's actually illegal to do in Minnesota as well. Minnesota has weird liquor laws, but we have really great THC laws. If you're catching, <laughs> catching the <laughs> through line, <laughs> it's really Balance. weird. It's yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Lots of questions, lots of questions in the chat. We're not going to try to keep you too long here, but a couple of these I want to get to first. I'm of not all, even halfway through my first call, man. You're good to go. Oh, oh man. I, I drank one and opened a second <laughs> Ready. I'm, well, I'm ready to this, go today. Uh, what am I drinking here? You had the uh, the Drownlands. In it, the Drownlands. This, thing, this beer is great. Send me more of this, please. Yeah, they. Yeah, great beer. Everybody's loving that Vienna Lager. Uh, Sean asked, "Is is there a big craft beer scene in Minnesota?" This is probably my first MM, MN beer. I'm gonna say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. The, the Twin Cities is one of the sleeper best beer scenes in the country. I will absolutely I, say that. Uh, I agree. As an outsider. I, I was blown away by every single place I visited when I went there. Uh, nice. If you can get there, go there. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, wait a couple months if you're a warm weather yeah, person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, or, or go now and, and get experience, to use the sky experience. Bridges. Exactly. That's true. Experience. Experience the whole thing. You know, we got. We got cold. We got warm. I mean, Minnesota rules. I love. I love living here. Public transportation rips. Thanks, Nick and Nora. Um, state of hockey. Uh, literally, a million hockey. people are registered with the U.S. Hockey Player Hockey Association. 
Yep. It, it, come on. Absolutely. The only thing I knew uh, about Minnesota before this is atmosphere is from Minnesota. That's true. Shout out. Very true. To, I've shout out to Ant and Slug. That's right. Yep. Seen those guys many times. Nice dudes. Um, yeah. yeah, we got a really cool music scene. Um, uh, I am, if I see another restaurant that's owned by out of state people, throw a Prince mural on the wall, I might puke, but <laughs> the food and the music is really good. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Minute Minnesota rules. Yes. Yeah. Minnesota is awesome. Please go there. <laughs> uh, a question from Cheryl is, is modest dog friendly? Totally. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. There is a, um, in our, um, <laughs> in our, uh, uh, group chat, like employee chat Slack, uh, that we, we use a uh, messaging system. Uh, we have a, te- we have a dogs only channel. It's pretty great. There's a lot of, there's a lot of dogs. Awesome. Shout out to Slack. I think yeah. shout, out to Slack. shout yeah. out to Slacks to your pet channels. Yep, yeah. Pet channels. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it, we have a, we have several regulars that only come here. They're only come there because the, it's dog friendly. And like, I just want to drink beer and have my dog next to me. I'm like, yeah, great. Cool. We have dog bowls. I mean, it's, it's yeah. Minneapolis is super dog friendly. Yeah. And if you're a baseball fan, uh, baseball season's a great time to go there because as sure. people have mentioned in the chat, uh, you guys are located like literally right around the corner from the stadium. Like, yeah. You walk out the door and you can see the stadium. Uh, yep. If you're, yeah, if you're a baseball, uh, uh, a park traveler or whatever, uh, mm-hmm. which is a new thing that I've, I'm not a huge baseball fan, to be honest. Uh, but the, yeah, being the, being like, I mean, we're a thousand feet out of left field, uh, from Target Field. You can see the Budweiser sign, uh, from our patio. So you can drink a good beer and <laughs> look, look at, at that. Yeah. And look at that one. <laughs> um, all right. Well, before we get out of here, let's did did did, I, I, did anybody else do this? I I, I did I did mine. Uh, my three year olds. Oh, my, I was so busy chatting. <laughs> <laughs> you could see I started to fill in my letters here, and I'm like, this is going to distract me for way too long. There's no <laughs> way I could do this. <laughs> nice job on the inside of the lines, dude. Very nice. That's hey, right. I I I get practice every day with a two and a half year old. There you go. I, I am very proud of my ability to stay in the lines. This is this is one of those labels when the beer gets cold enough, then you can see the label and you know you can drink it. Oh, it's like one of those magic shirts that you would like wear yeah. wear outside. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Those were sick. We, so breweries should bring those back for 2023. I don't know why I'm saying breweries. I work at a brewery. That's my that's my goal for 2023. <laughs> we're gonna have one of those cool shirts where you go out in the sun and it it changes. Yeah. That's right. John, we did a, uh, we did a pride shirt on uh, uh, for June that was like rainbow, like uh, it was like I don't even know what kind of fil- like screen print it was, but like if you turned a certain way, it would just go, it would do the rainbow and then you turn back and it would do it the other way. It was super weird. It's very trippy. It's like one this of those before 3D the 3D album covers where you like move it back and of. forth and like. And this was before the weed water was legal. <laughs> <laughs> John, before we get out of here, anything to plug? Tell the folks where they can find Modest Beer. Um, okay, so uh, Instagram, Facebook, is that still a thing? Uh, Twitter, yeah, uh, at Modest Brewing, uh, modestbrewing.com. Uh, you can find us in New York, New Jersey. Uh, check out Halftime Bev. You can probably get it. Uh, if you don't live in Minnesota, you can get it shipped to you. Um, Every once in a while, you'll see us in Chicago and Ohio and Iowa and Wisconsin pretty regularly, Minnesota all the time. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Easy. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us, John. It was it was really good to see you again. Uh, yeah, man. Great to see you. Thanks for and, having me. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for thanks to Modest for supplying an awesome beer uh, for this box. Isaac, thanks yeah. for co-hosting. Good, Great good to, to see here. you again absolutely you'll be be back tomorrow um thanks to everybody in the chat great chat energy tonight somebody said best stream yet best chat energy yet you guys are awesome Um, carrie ate her crayons killing it (laughs) we'll be back tomorrow for a special very very special discussion with someone who has achieved something 
only 21 other people have. Throw it in the chat Ooh. if you can guess what that is really quick. Uh, this person's also a really awesome brewer, and we'll be drinking some of his awesome beer tomorrow. So see you then. Yeah, people are getting it. People are getting it in the chat there. Yeah, we have <laughs> America's newest Master Cicerone on the show tomorrow. I am so, so excited to nice. talk to him. And, well, shit, that may give away uh, who our brewery is tomorrow. But anyways, see you tomorrow. Same bat time. Same bat channel. We'll be here to drink. Cheers, everyone. Good night.